Check these out. These are the new Walksnail Avatar Goggles X, and these goggles have a massive leg up on DJI, and it's hiding right underneath this. <laughs> Here we go, unboxing time. Let's see what you get in the box. I am so pumped to see what these look like. All right, we get a nice carrying case. Looks like everything is just in this. Oh, all right, walks now, I see you. All right, so in here you got the goggles. We've got a little user manual, cleaning cloth, and a power cable. Simple. All right, tons of stuff to make sure I cover in this one. We've got a really nice set of new digital FPV goggles from Walksnail, also known as Caddx. These are retailing for $459, which is cheaper than DJI's goggles too, but a little bit more expensive than goggles Integra, but I feel like these ones have some awesome features that you won't see in either of DJI's goggles. Like I mentioned in the beginning, the Goggles X have one big feature that I don't think we would ever see from DJI, and that's an upgradable digital VTX module. That's what's hiding right underneath this top cover right here. That's also a patch antenna. I'm gonna go over this more in depth in a little bit. We can take this all apart and we can see what that module looks like. The screens inside the goggles are 1080p 100Hz OLED screens, and the optics on board offer us a 50 degree field of view. One degree less than DJI's goggles too, so pretty much the same. The goggles are made of plastic and are very similar in size to DJI Goggles 2 or Orcas. I wish I could compare these to the original Avatar goggles, but I don't have a pair of those. So instead, I'm going to mainly be comparing these to the DJI Goggles 2 and my Orcas. My goggles came with a single foam faceplate, similar to the feel of the stock DJI faceplate. On my face, they seem to fit okay, except for the top of the nose. Um, they feel very similar to how the Goggles 2 fit. I get a little light leak around the top, but none on the bottom. Of the three goggles, the Orcas fit me the best. Goggles X and Goggles 2 fit about the same. I think with the right foam, this one would fit a lot better than this one. The strap on these seems decent. I think this is a leather with a stretchy portion back here. I do wish that they would put a little loop in the back, kind of similar to my Orcas. DJI didn't do this either, uh, but Orcas have this little strap back here where you can put the battery and then you just have the battery sitting there and then it goes right into the goggles and you don't have wires going down to your pocket or anything. So that would be nice to have on these. It's not the end of the world. On the front of the goggles, there's a really sleek looking LED behind this black transparent plate. That initial color is always gonna be green, but then once the goggles power up, you can change the color of the LED to be red, blue, or green. It has a very similar front antenna design to the DJI Goggles V2 with four removable SMA stubby antennas. And then this top plate right here actually has a patch antenna on it. So technically five antennas on these. Also on the top of the goggles, we have two vents, one on each side that's part of that plate, a 5D button over on this side for navigating the menu system. Above that, we have a back button, and then above that, a record button, and then above that is the bind button. Over on this side, we don't have much. This is just a vent. And then rotating over to this side, we have the power input, and this kind of looks like a button but it isn't. So this is the barrel connector that you would find on DJI goggles V2 or Orcas, and these goggles are capable of 6S. The old Walksnail goggles for some reason only had 5S input, these ones have 6. Looking underneath the goggles, we have our adjustment knobs and these two twist to adjust the focus and they move side to side so you can get the best fit for your eyes. And then last but certainly not least, over on this side we have an HDMI in, HDMI out, AV in and a micro SD card slot. So some nice upgrades on these compared to the original avatar goggles. All right, you guys wanna see the removable VRX module in here and so do I. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take the strap off cause it's gonna make it a lot easier. Now we can remove the foam. This is just held on with Velcro you can peel it up. Also, something that I completely forgot to mention, this has a proximity sensor. So if the goggles are away from your face, it'll turn off the screens and save battery life. So this is a setting that you can turn on or off in the menu system, but that sensor is right here. Now that we have the foam off, we have two holes right up top, one here, one here, and this is just a Phillips head. Remove those two screws. Once you have those two screws out, you can kind of push forward a little bit on this cover and it'll push out and then you can put your fingers underneath there, lift up, and this cover will come off. 
So when you lift this cover up, just be careful because it is acting as a patch antenna. So it is connected to our VRX board here. To access the board, we've got four more Phillips head screws, one in each corner, one here, 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 and here. Remove these. Once those four screws are loosened, you can grab this plate and lift up. There is thermal paste on the other side of this, so it can get messy. Don't do that, don't pour your screws everywhere. <laughs> and now we can remove our patch antenna. This is just a UFL, so you can just kind of lift it up, and there's your antenna. So this is technically what you could replace in the future with future hardware updates that Walksnail releases. So now to get this board out, we have two connectors right here. We have this one and this one. Those ones just pull out. And then we have four antennas going to different UFL connectors. So we got to remove all of these. And then we have one Phillips head screw sitting right there. Like that. And now we have these two connectors right here. One right there, one right here. Those pull out pretty easy. So with all of those removed, we now have one screw, I believe, that's holding it in. So now with everything removed, I'm gonna put my thumb underneath that last screw that we took out. Just put it right underneath the board and we're gonna lift up. I'm not really sure what's underneath this. So I'm gonna take it slow. All right, I got thermal paste all over my fingers so I had to go wash that off. You got some tape covering up these connectors, um, but once you get the tape off, they're actually pretty easy to take off. So you've got this ribbon cable right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. You lift up on the brown part and that will loosen up the ribbon cable and now it comes free. Now I'll have a little bit more room to get this cable off and this is a connector that's similar to um, the, the plug that you'd see on a Cadex Vista uh, connection to the camera. And that just clicks off. All right, so here's our main PCB V1.1. You've got the four UFL connectors right up front here. And then this one right here is for the patch antenna. These two cables are, I'm assuming, to connect power. And then we also have a USB micro right here. So I don't have much info on this since I'm filming this pre-release, but from what I understand, this is what makes these goggles future-proof. Since you can remove this main PCB, any future hardware improvements that Walksnail releases would be on a board similar to this. You take this one out, you put your new one in, and you have a brand new set of goggles. I'm gonna reinstall this back into my goggles because I am testing this out tomorrow, so I'm gonna put this back in. So in addition to the Goggles X, Walksnail sent me an Avatar HD Nano V3 kit, and I threw it in one of my Cinewhips. This is my go-to 2.5 inch cinema for real estate FPV, nice and slow flying. I got a whole build video on this where I installed a Cadex Vista, but I removed the Cadex Vista and I put in that Walksnail unit that they sent me, and this thing has Walksnail on it now. So this is all bound up to my goggles, and we're gonna be putting it head to head with one of my other favorite setups that I got. I featured this in a couple videos, but this is my uh, QA. 2.5 inch build. This is another 6S Cinewhoop and this has the O3 air unit in it and that is paired to my DJI goggles too. So we're going to be putting these two head to head. I'm mainly interested in penetration over range. So let's take these out and we'll see how the image quality and the penetration capabilities compare to the DJI goggles too paired with an O3 air unit. All right, so we're gonna start off with DJI, and the drone that I'm gonna be using is this little Cinewhoop right here. We've got O3 on board, and pretty much my goal is to just go around this entire building. So we're currently at 50 megabits per second, full reception, going around the first corner of the building. All right, now we're on the other side of the building and I lost it. All right, so the O3 air unit went a lot shorter than I thought it would. It only went to the second corner on the other side of the building. I wasn't even able to fly at all on the other side of the building. I'm kind of surprised because I can actually see there. 
through these windows, but mainly that corner, uh, that was the most difficult. So I lost reception as soon as I turned that corner. So let's see how walk snail does. It was really good image quality. I really like the image quality on this. The screens look nice. Very comparable to DJI. Going on the side. Oh, all right. So I lost it at the exact same point as O3, and I'm actually a little surprised by that because the O3 is on 700 milliwatts, and this is only on 500. So I'm curious if I had a 700 milliwatt on Walk Snail, if that would be actually better than O3. Mm -hmm. So now what I want to do, I'm going to take the O3 up in a minute, but I want to take the walk snail right now, just kind of over in this big parking lot, maybe fly it over on that side of the building and just kind of see how reception is in this area. This has really good image quality. I like the colors in this. It's a nice, sharp image. I've got a bunch of trees between me now. So now it's down to two bars. This might be a good penetration test. Now it's down to one bar. So I'll have to take the O3 over here too and see how that does. Now it's back up to two. I'm just gonna go around the parking lot. Look at these trees. So now we're getting to the point where the building is gonna be between me and the drone. So it's down to one over on this side. Zero, so it says zero bars, but I'm still able to fly it pretty good. And now I should jump back up. Let's see if I can go through here. I like flying through trees. Let's see if we can send this through a tree. bunch of scraggle nice so you can clearly go through a tree you can see that scraggle that would typically get the drone caught up <laughs> all right that's cool these goggles are really nice. The screen is very similar to the goggles too. It feels like it's the same screen. I'm pretty sure it is the same screen. It's a 1080p OLED screen, so pretty much the same thing. Very good image quality, and this isn't even their best VTX. Um, very cool. So now what I'm gonna do is I kind of have an idea of like kind of like on the other side of these trees, I started to lose reception over there. And then when I was over in that parking lot on that side of the building was when I lost reception too. So let's see how the O3 does in those areas. All right, cutting through, going to this parking lot over here. Still at full reception. This is where it dipped down to three on walk snail. Still going strong. Full reception, oh, down to three. So it dipped down to three in that corner. It definitely, it didn't get as choppy as walk snail did but we did start to lose reception. So now we'll go on this side of the building and see how it does over here. So this was where it started to get a little sketchy because we have the big building in between us. So it's down to three, two. Yep, two bars, back to three. And back to four. So it's honestly pretty comparable to DJI. I kind of wish I brought an air unit with me so I could test the air unit. 
But then again, uh, with the O3, this is on 700 milliwatts, whereas that VTX that I'm testing out is 500. And even so, it's, it's pretty damn close. Cool. All right, so I really wanted to put these to the test on a real estate FPV project, but unfortunately the house that I was gonna film at got postponed, so now we're filming it at the end of the week. I'm still gonna test it there, so keep an eye out for that video. Otherwise, I'm very surprised that this performed as close as it did to the O3. That corner on the other side of the building, I expected the O3 to be able to go all the way around the building and it just got to that corner. The Waxnail goggles got to the same corner and they cut out. When I was flying over in this side, we had the trees, there's pretty thick trees over here. So when I got into that corner, the Waxnail cut down to two bars. The O3 held in there at three bars, but it still did dip down. And then when I was flying on that side of the building over there, the O3 held up pretty good and the Waxnail dipped down a little bit more. Comparing these two goggles, just the goggles, not penetration wise or anything just looking at these two goggles hardware wise these ones easily take the cake you're never going to see a replaceable vtx module or a video receiver module in a dji product you're just never going to see it with the Waxnail ones once you get a set of goggles like this when Waxnail comes out with any upgraded hardware you take this cover off you get a new pcb board take it off take the old one out put the new one in and you pretty much have a new set of goggles so that's to me, one of the main selling features of getting a future-proof goggle like this. All right, so I am pretty impressed with how Avatar held up against O3, even with that 200 milliwatt power difference. In conclusion, speaking as somebody that has invested a lot of money into DJI gear for my professional equipment, if I had to do it over right now, I would really be considering the Waxnail system. The image quality is getting incredibly close to DJI, and when you can get a set of future-proof goggles like this that can take advantage of future hardware upgrades, I think it's tough to want to go to the other guys that are going to make you buy a new set of $600 goggles every other year for a hardware upgrade. Perfect example is when the DJI 04 units come out, am I going to be able to use my goggles too? I have no idea. All right, my main complaint with the goggles, the nose. For some reason, I had this issue with the DJI goggles too. The very top of the nose just pushes on my nose too much. And I, this isn't an issue that I have with Orcas. If you look at the design of the Orcas, it's more of a, I mean, this goes all the way up to the forehead almost. It's just a giant cutout and I don't get any light leak in these and it fits perfect. They're comfortable. If I could have this design on these goggles or on the goggles too, I would be extremely excited. Um, but this design is perfect and I wish that more companies would go with this style. I feel like eventually we're gonna start seeing more foam for this. I went through like 20 different pairs of foam on my goggles too and I finally found one that was halfway decent. Either way, I'm sure we're gonna start seeing aftermarket foam for these to make it fit people's faces better. Um, but I think that these ones have a better chance at fitting good for me over the goggles too. All in all though, very good goggles, very sleek, nice design. The link between the goggles and the drone seems solid and comparable to DJI. Image quality is definitely getting there, and luckily, when it does get there, you'll be able to upgrade easily without having to buy a whole new set of goggles. That's gonna do it for this review, guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more FPV content. Leave this video a like, and if you have any questions about the Walksnail Goggles X, leave a comment down below.